Now in this video I'm going to have a look at chapter 9.3, page 257 of the text. It's called Relativity of Simultaneity. Now simultaneity is the idea that two events can be simultaneous. Um, if they occur at the same time they're said to be simultaneous. Or if they appear to have occurred at the same time you can judge whether they're simultaneous or not. Now let's get this idea um, in terms of sound and before we work on light. Now imagine you're in, at school and you've got a bell, say the 12 o'clock bell that rings at both ends of the school grounds. Now if you're directly in the middle of the two bells and the bells ring at the same time right on 12 o'clock, the sound wave from both bells will reach your ears at the same time. Now if you know you're midway, you can say the two bells, the ringing of the two bells was simultaneous. Now if you're closer to one bell than the other, say you're like this, of course you're going to hear the, this yellow bell ring first. The sound waves only has to go a short distance to get to your ear. The sound wave from the orange one has to go all this way to get to your ear. Okay, But if you know the distance you are from each of the bells and you know the speed of sound, you can work out the time delay and you can judge whether they would have gone off at the same time or not. Now that's also true if you were using light. So let's imagine you had two street lights and I'll shine them like this. So that's the red one and we've also got a green one. And if they come at you like this, get that right, okay, they shine on me at the same time. So if I know I'm in the middle of the two bulbs and they shine on me at the same time, I can say they're simultaneous. If I'm closer to one bulb than the other, um, we can make a judgment about whether they were simultaneous if we know the distance and we know, well we know the speed of light, it's c, 3 by 10 to the 8, and you can make a judgment like that. Now the problem is, what happens if the object in which, or the event is occurring in a frame of reference that's moving relative to you? Now let's imagine we use um, this pole that I had before for the boat, I've just I've just put it on um, a little bit of cardboard in front of it and I could have it on a boat or a, a railroad track or something like that. Now to stop me having to lift that thing up all the time, I'll just use this as my railroad carriage and I'll draw a train line here. So there's the train line. Now Einstein liked using train lines because um, there's a train going through his town that he was living in. and um, you know, it was a familiar uh, object that he could use, travel in a straight line, constant speed, and it was just easy to use. So, um, now let's imagine we've got this train carriage, and we've got these two doors, front and back of the train. Now let's imagine the train moves this way, and we've got a front door and a back door. Let's imagine these doors are light activated. In other words, when a beam of light strikes them, they will... Um, they will open. So if my fingertips are the, strength, the beam of light, you can see they go out and they'd reach the, the doors and the doors would open. When the pulse hit that door, it'd open. When the pulse hit that door, it'd open. To make it a bit easier, I'll just use put these on my fingers just to show you how the pulses of light can move. It's just it's easier for you to see. Okay, so I'll do this again. So there's the light. Now when the light goes off, it just goes out like that and hits the two doors and they both open together. Okay, Because light travels at the same speed, that's in the middle. So the opening of those doors would be simultaneous. Now that's simultaneous to me because I'm at rest with respect to this event and I'm midway. I mean I'm pretending I'm the observer in the middle. I'm midway between the two events and so the doors would open. Now you're at rest with respect to this as well. I'm not moving at the moment and you'd see the two doors open at the same time. So to you it would be simultaneous. So we both agree that the event of the light going off and the doors opening is simultaneous. Question is, what would happen if this train was moving along the track when the light went off? Okay, now let's have a look. Now let's imagine I'm aboard the train and I'm thinking about the doors in my own perspective, my frame of reference. So I'd see this happening and they would open at the same time. Because 
in reality, I don't care what you're doing. You can be moving past me. As far as I'm concerned, I'm at rest and that happens and the doors open simultaneously. I don't care if you're moving past me or you're stationary. That'll always happen for me because I'm at rest to that event. Now, as far as you're concerned, what you'd see is the train moving along like this, but the light being given off by the bulb. Now this is hard to do, hard for me to do, but you get the impression as the train moves on, the bulbs, the light moves out like that, but you'll notice the orange one hits the back door first because what's happening is the bulb, the light is still moving out like that, but the back of the train is catching up to the orange pulse and it's moving away from the yellow one, so the yellow one would take longer to actually hit the front of the train. So what you'd see is the back door opening first, and the front doors opening a little bit later. Now that was simultaneous to me because I was at rest with respect to the event. It's not simultaneous to you because it's moving. You're seeing that as a moving um, frame of reference. So what was simultaneous to me is not simultaneous to you. So the idea that events are simultaneous depends on the motion of the observer. Okay, let me just show you that without all this stuff. Now, can you imagine my hands are the, um, the doors of the front and back of the train? So if I was moving along like this, I would see that happen because I'm at rest with respect to the event. So moving along, the two doors open like that. What you would see is this. So you'd see the back door open first, then the front door. So I see this, you see this. Okay, so the opening of the doors is simultaneous to me, but not simultaneous to you. So this idea, relativity of simultaneity, says that two events that are simultaneous to one observer, which is me, may not be simultaneous to another observer in a moving reference frame you know, relative to the first. So I see that simultaneous, you see that not simultaneous. Okay, and that's the whole point of simultaneity. Now, um, there's a couple of questions at the end of that which go into some examples um, of simultaneity and basically for you to write, you know, write down what it means and give an example. I there possibly could be a question on the exam. I would tend to think it would be multi-choice. They'd give you some examples and say which one of the following is simultaneous or not simultaneous and you'd have to search through them. They'll all sound pretty plausible but you've got to be really careful. Now if you do enough of the CYL questions in the book um, you'll have no trouble with that. But it'd be worth one or two marks if there were questions on there. So I'm going to leave it at that because that's the end of um, simultaneity. That's all you need to know. Okay, that's it.